Uh, Chris, you're still with us? Yes, I am. Uh, just to just to kind of close up this conversation, if we go back and read the writings of Thomas Jefferson on religion, and of course he rewrote the New Testament, taking out all the miracles. Right. It's in, still in print. It's been continuously in print since the uh, the early 19th century. Uh, the Jefferson has the Jefferson Bible, and and you read uh, uh, Thomas, you know Benjamin Rush and uh, Benjamin Franklin and some of the famous deists of the day. They really seemed, in in my mind, to have it, uh, you know, to to have something similar to what you and I have been talking about. This kind of middle ground that acknowledges uh, a mystery and does not seek to uh, def to anthropomorphize it or define it in ways that that create institutions of power. Is it time for us to reinvent deism? Um, I think the problem is more institutional religion. Um, and we've confused the religious impulse with uh, religious institutions and the uh, ideologies of religious institutions, which are human creations and serve human power. My point. Uh, and, and so... Uh, you know, but deism I mean, never had any kind of organized deism structure. No, yeah, I mean, deism gets into a, a bit of nature worship sometimes, which, uh, but it comes pretty close to where I'm coming from. I mean, I'm a great fan of Emerson, uh, Thoreau. Uh, you know, well, doesn't well as, doesn't pantheism, frankly, make more sense to you than any other ism out there? Um, I I guess you know, for me, I, um, I just have a hard time. Latching on to, I mean, I, I you know, I, I was a war correspondent. The, the universe for me is morally neutral. I understand the cruelty, not only of human nature but of nature itself. Uh, and, and I think it's more uh, acknowledging those non-rational forces, which we'll never understand, which are beyond the ability to quantify or measure love, beauty, grief, mortality, the struggle for meaning. Uh, the same thing that that artists seek to grasp and struggle with uh, and uh, and that's of course why in all religious movements at what one point were completely intertwined with artistic expression all of the Greek uh, tragedies and, and plays were put on in religious festivals uh, and so uh, it, you know I'm, a, I'm a, just a great believer in mystery that there's a lot we don't know and we'll never know uh, and uh, and and I don't think you know that the Buddhism Buddhists have a great saying that you can memorize as many sutras as you want, but that will never make you wise. Right. That, there, that, that one, that it's, it's more than knowledge. It's about intuition. It's about understanding uh, the, the ebb and flow of life uh, and acknowledging that and acknowledging that, that finally there is a, a transcendent or a mysterious quality to it. Um, but I, you know, I, I am as uh, critical of institutional religion as I am to any Orthodoxy, include whether that comes out of atheism, whether that comes out of Christianity, I don't care. Yeah, okay. We have uh, about a minute and a half left here. I'm sorry, but uh, resistor becomes serfs. You are suggesting that basically the Obama administration has bought into the the, the same thing that the the Bush, the Clinton, the Bush, and the Reagan administrations all bought into, which is uh, you know we are all neoliberals now, and Wall Street is going to rule the world. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, and, and, and that this is the, the beginning of, a, of, of you know, fascism being the definition of the merging of corporate and state interests, um, that we're coming back into a fascist world. I'm wondering if, if perhaps the Fed borrowing money uh, from the Treasury is, you know, for the, for the first time, you know, buying a trillion dollars of the Treasury notes, right. might actually be a good thing. It might be a way to solve that problem. In fact, in fact, I, I'm a big advocate of the Treasury nationalizing the Fed. Well, I, I think there's, if there's any doubt about whether or not we live in a corporate state, that, that the actions of the Obama administration has put that to rest. Um, you know, we, uh, you know, this has been the largest transference of wealth upwards in American history. Uh, it, you know, we are sustaining the unsustainable. Uh, we are printing money. Uh, we are totally dependent on people buying our debt, uh, primarily the Chinese and the Gulf states. The moment that stops, the country goes bankrupt. The dollar becomes garbage. Uh, you know, unless we buy our own debt. I'm I'm wondering if the reason why the Fed borrowed the money from the Treasury instead of borrowing it from China was because they knew that China wouldn't give it to them. 
No, China's still buying it, aren't they? Now, didn't they just raise Yeah, but not, they, nobody's they raise there hasn't been a raise. trillion dollar auction. And yeah. and in fact, when Germany held an auction, what, uh, about 4 weeks ago, they only sold 95% of their bonds. Well, the, we know the Chinese are getting very skittish. Um, which is why they up they didn't up the interest rates by much, but they upped them. Uh so uh, I I I think that we've uh uh uh, you, you know, we we don't have unlimited resources, uh, and unfortunately, what resources we have are being pumped into uh, zombie banks and financial uh, investment houses that have engaged in criminal fraud. And yeah. and, uh, and, yeah. and 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 when it runs out, we are not going to have the capacity uh, to either pay back this money or to. Uh, ameliorate the human misery. Rup, and thus, and thus comes the inflation. Ronald Reagan and, and David Stockman's Starve the Beast have actually worked. Chris Hedges, TruthDig.com.